Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Was That? I am Zat and today we are going to be taking a look at Concrete Jungle by Coal Power Games. This game is, um, gameplay wise, technically not a city builder or a tycoon game. It's more like a card collecting game or puzzle game, somewhere in between. But it does have a lot of city builder aspect to it, zoning and economy. And of course it obviously has sort of a, a city building style to it. So I thought you guys might take interest in the game. I find it quite enjoyable. Um, the game is actually out on Wednesday, which hopefully is the day that this video is coming out. So go check it out on Steam if you're interested in it. And I'll just run through uh, a few of the um, options that the game has. I mean, obviously on the side here we have the campaign and some custom games. The campaign will run you through uh, basically a tutorial first and then a few missions that get harder as they go. I like this screen. It looks very reminiscent to um, SimCity 4's regional view. And then custom games of solo, which is basically similar to the campaign. You you build the deck as you go. Uh, classic mode, similar to the main game, except you don't build your deck. You just get random cards, which I actually find fairly difficult. And a versus mode, which you can play against or with other people. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. I actually don't know how well this works, but um, just to show you sort of how the base game works, we'll go to solo mode. There are different characters you can use and unlock. I haven't really upgraded anyone yet. Uh, oh, you got some like special cards and things. That's cool. But I'll just use uh, Laney Thompson. And we'll make it a short game, just 10 columns, so I can show you how it works. Starting purchases. No, that's okay. We'll, we'll skip that. Oops. Uh, so these are our cards. You can sort of pre-build your deck. Some of these cards need to be unlocked. But I will just stick with the default cards, and let's jump into this solo mode. So, what is going on here? The main thing to pay attention to along the side here is our target, which is currently three. Now when we place down a card, such as a shop, it's going to adjust our points on the map here. And when we put something down like a house, which we'll get to later, um, it will um, collect those points. So a factory has a negative effect all around it, but it does increase our economy. And once our economy goes up, we can buy new cards. Uh, a green would be useful maybe here. Affect that point. Now we have a house. Pop that down. We have one point. Currently our goal is three. Once we hit that, we can clear the row. So let's just keep working away. I'll place another house here. Uh, these actually connect together to create a block. If you make a block of four, I think there's an economy bonus. And we'll do another shop. So we connect our commercial zones together here. Uh, I'll put the factories together. Obviously we don't want to um, mix our positives with our negatives. So there's sort of a, a zoning aspect to it. Restaurant could be useful. Um, maybe not the... Mm, I kind of want actually the supermarket. Let's do that, because I really need to pump up this row now that I'm already filling it up with other buildings. So let's drop it here. I'm just going to make the next row up even harder. But we'll get to that when we get to that. I'm not excellent at this game, but hopefully I can at least get through the uh, 10 rows. Um, so if we drop, we put a green here, connect those greens together and drop that point there. It makes a nice little park. Get some houses. Okay, we'll clear this row. I have a habit of always trying to make combos and getting a bunch of cleared rows all at once, but I tend to just fill up the map and get stuck. Uh, and this is a point where we can take a look at some of the options in the game. For example, we can toggle on our previously cleared rows, which is a nice thing to look at. Although it can get a bit confusing if you think that these cards are still in play. And we can go look at our deck. Actually, I guess that's the... Oh, that's the whole card database. We actually want to click on this because we now have one card unlocked, so we can buy a new card. These are four randomly picked chosen cards, and we get to only choose out of these. I can't reset it to get the same ones. Um, the bus station is probably a good one because it allows me to put a single point anywhere, which I often have trouble with. I just need to squeeze one more point in. As most of the other cards only have the points within the radius around them. So... Um, let's just keep clearing. So we're on this row now. We can easily clear this out with some houses. Let's drop a shop here. 
I'm not going to be using that negative one. Clear this row. Get some points. And a restaurant. Well, run this row. I could put it... Oh, no, I can't. Yeah, see, these are already out of play. Hmm. I don't like these negatives. I could put it, like, here, because those points are already negative. And then I can use that way later on. It's dangerous playing way up here, though, because sometimes you need to put things like bus stations to uh, actually affect the row you're working on. Might as well put the house there. Drop some shops. Factories. Turning this into a wasteland over here. Get some more cards. Let's grab those cards. I always forget to actually unlock the next card. Renovation. That's a great card because it just throws some points on top of any point collecting card. Community garden. Plus three to max blocks size. Plus one to select the adjacent building. It's a useful card because of the adjacentness of it. Uh, adding to block size. I don't use blocks too often. I end up doing it just for aesthetics reasons. But it's hard to even just get a block of four within this small map. I kind of wish... There might be an option somewhere, but this is only five wide. One, two, three... No, six wide. It'd be nice to have, like, a, a seven or eight wide. Just for a bit more freeform play. Might be a bit too easy, but I, th I would find it enjoyable. So, I can put this down in another park. This would be a great spot for that. We are still working on this row, so let's... This will probably be easy to put something here, so let's um start working on the next row and actually clean up maybe this spot. Just might be able to use it. More factories. Uh, I can squeeze that in here without too much detriment and it gives us an economy bonus. Some shops, I can plop that down. Actually, let's put that here because it's a perfect piece for that. We'll start collecting on this row. Plus three to max block size. Okay, so that's this card. I don't really have a block that I want to grow. Let's put it here and see what happens. And then I can go ahead and uh, bump up this. But I think that's going to, yeah, it's going to take this block out of place. So it doesn't really help me at all. I need to play that sort of thing farther up. Hmm. Not sure how f far ahead I should be planning for these moves, but uh, I'm still pretty new to this game. I mean, it did basically just come out. <laughs> I was a, a a backer on the Kickstarter, so I did get some early access, as you saw in the uh, game I previewed earlier, uh, or in the video I previewed earlier, about a year ago, I think. Anyways, let's collect some points here. Uh, let's do a renovation. How much does this do? It doesn't actually tell me. It's weird. I think I should have some text here. But I should probably add one point. Yes. There are nicer renovations to add two points. I think it's called an extreme renovation. Um, I guess we'll just need another house around here. And then we can drop something like a supermarket on it. Um, so I don't want all those negatives right there. I don't like the supermarkets. Bus station I don't really want to use yet because it'd be nice to put it down when I actually get in a pickle. Well, okay, let's put it here because we already have these three points. So these three negatives on that side aren't going to affect us too much. And then we can just move all of our industry over to that side. Uh, let's, I want to extend the green, but this is only to adjacent. Oh, that's easy, let's just do this. Waste of a house, but whatever. And I'll get some houses down. Another restaurant. Let's uh, just pile up onto that. Might as well start putting houses on these points. And... I keep getting these supermarkets and car dealerships. I could, like, cancel it out by putting it here. What else do we have? Bus station? Hmm... Okay, what do we actually need to do here? We still need to clear this row. I don't want to negatively affect those houses. This would make that row particularly difficult to work on. 
Let's put it here, because if I put it out of play, those uh, negative effects won't show up at all. It's the easiest thing to do. Chops. Perfect. Oh, that. I think I accidentally clicked the button. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> well, we're stuck with that there. Uh, we can drop a factory in here, because that won't do anything. We're not going to play into those spots. Put a house... Do I want to put a house here? Uh, I can use a bus station because this is getting kind of crammed here. I need to finally use this carb. So let's put a house here. Let's grab the bus station. I'll put it on maybe one of these really negative points. Pop it on this. I could have just put on that at any time. And we still need to bring this up to three. I can't make my park any bigger. So this already has three across. I should get a house here before upgrading this one. So that's what I'll do. I'll put the park here. And I'll upgrade... Oh, I'm looking at the wrong road. This has no points. Jeez. Okay, let's use this factory. Let's put it down... Somewhere won't affect me too much. I'll have time to clean this up a bit more. So let's put it way back here. Let's put a house. This might be a bad idea, but I'd like to get the combo. I still need to get three points in here and get one point there. Uh, shops. So I'll probably need to put houses here. I mean, that's the only place I can go. Two, three, and I can extend either of these blocks. I wonder if I could join blocks together with um, one of those block extending pieces. Okay, well, let's put a house here. I could put shops here and neutralize this with the chance <laughs> of having it be um, useful later. And, uh,. Green. Oh, I don't want to put a green here. Because I don't want to fill up this row yet. Put it here and bump up that. Okay, let's do that. Man, I didn't think I would have so much trouble just getting through. Like, we're on what? Row five? Four? Okay, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Put it back here. More houses. I always have too many houses when I don't really need them. Okay, let's start putting them where we actually need to start. Uh, like, we'll have to clear these rows eventually. Uh oh. So our economy just went up. I think that's called economy. Well, our target just went up. So. Luckily, it's actually just on the last row, which is our target goal. But anything beyond what the, um, the last row is now going to need four points to continue to unlock each row. But um, our goal is just there. So if we can just get through these first couple rows, we do have a chance, or not a chance, the option of clearing a single row. We lose a life. Uh, we only have one life right now. So if we lose one row and then we get stuck again, then it's game over. But uh, I'd like to try to get through this. So, plus one to adjacent tile. Because I might need to use that somewhere along, else along here. And there's another strategy, like I could just say goodbye to this row and not actually try to upgrade it. If it has really bad negatives on it. But um, right now, I think we might still have a chance if I can get some more bus stations. Maybe we should unlock some more useful cards. Like, uh, the post office. Discard three cards from the build list. Market might be useful. There, the bus station. Definitely want that. Renovation. Definitely want that. I'd like to show you guys some cooler cards, but, uh, I also would like to get through the game. Office tower basically just adds to your economy. And, of course, makes the, um, target grow as well. That's what these different, uh, little tiles mean. Usually, cards that are really beneficial to getting more cards also makes the target go up. Uh, we'll get a post office. Yeah. Excepto. So I can put a green here and dump it onto there. 
That'll give me the three. Let's do that. That'll give me more room to build back here. Uh, we might just dump this row. I'll, I'll start working on this row. Put a house there. Hide a factory behind our goal. Discard three cards. Renovation's useful. House is useful. Bus station is useful. So I won't actually build that yet. I will put the restaurant down somewhere. Say... Probably don't want to put a bunch of negatives on my goal row. I could put it all the way down here. Is this... Yeah, that's good. Renovation. I can drop that on here. I can use the bus station on that to get that row. Uh, let's drop some houses where we're actually going to need them. Back here. Put the bus station back here and upgrade this again. There we go. It'd be nice to have something like uh, townhouses. I believe that's a card and you get like double the points. Because there's more people in them, so I guess more happiness, more goodness. Houses. So we need some here. Get four. And you can start to see how it's pretty easy later on to actually start really piling up those points. Now, do we want to try actually clearing this row, or should I just uh, lose a life? Oh, I can't. Oh, the column has to be filled before you, you're allowed to uh, force it. So factory I don't want. Green would be useful. House is okay. So I'll, I'll put the shops down. Um, we don't actually need it. I guess we still need some more points on our goal row. Factory comes back here, get some economy. House put here. Green. So I can actually bump this up. And all we need is like a bus station and we can clear that row. Um, I could just randomly collect more points for no real reason. I guess it does add to my score, which uh, helps me unlock things for my character later on. I believe. And sure, why not? Let's put a house here. Supermarket. Let's bump that up even more. And we have another green, which can't reach this house. I can't put it here and like bump up this one to get just four on there. Factory. House. So I just need push this up a little bit more. Let's put a house. This doesn't really matter what I do. Put a house there. Um, and we're basically just looking for a bus station. Well, what else could we do? Oh yeah, the police station. This will be perfect. This will uh, add a point to everything along that row. I guess the column. And the fire station will add every. Will give points to everything along the row. Let's put the police station because that's nice to be able to point back. Animal refuge plus one to selected block. So that's like a bus station. Just do anything. Uh, community garden, not useful. Library would be kind of nice. Done. And then, um, probably it wouldn't be until later on in the game when I have more positive cards that I want to start looking at those heavily negative cards to bump up the economy. But uh, I don't know the optimal strategy yet. Um, I guess we'll drop some houses down, make them nice, give them some shops. What are we looking for right now? Basically, just this animal refuge should probably do it. But I'll just build for the sake of building right now. Library. Sure. Animal refuge. We'll put it there. And we want to put it on put it here. And that should give us a bunch of bonuses all the way to the goal. Six. Six times six. Four times four. Area complete. So that's that's be the that's how a, a basic mission works. It'd be like that in the campaign as well. Usually you're going a little bit more than just ten blocks, so you have to manage your resources a bit more. Um, I will take a quick look at say a versus game. I would actually like to oh, let's go with AI. And then uh, I guess this is teams, so we're going to be versus or co-op. I guess we'll go versus. Uh, my name, my name is just Zat. And I think that's good. 
We'll just take a quick look, see how it works. I won't go all the way through. So we are starting first. We can build on this side, but we can't build here. Oh, okay. So in co-op, I believe you are both trying to get the same column, and versus you both have separate columns. So let's, um, let's put a green and let's actually bump up one of my own points. Drop a house there. Uh, I guess we should actually work on this first column. Um, take up some space here. So I get three moves and then it's the AI's turn. What does he do? I could probably learn how to play the game. Oh, of course, yeah, he takes my point if I leave it leave, sitting out there. Oh, and then he can do negatives against me. That makes a lot of sense. Wow, this could actually be really interesting. I'd like to play this with another person. Um, so it's negative one on here now, and he's got a point down here. So if I want to like counter that, I have to waste a park. I can drop shops on this. Well, it's gonna mess up this row. And I want to keep these for myself, so let's put them over here. Actually, if I put them here, I think this is my last move. I want to put it here and put a house there. I'll put a house here first. What's going on now? What is going on now? Uh, okay, so the AI is picking cards. Wait, do we share an economy? I think we do. So whoever's turn it is, if there's points, they're going to go buy those cards. Oh, I guess we share a deck as well. So... Whatever he unlocks, I get to use. Okay, so I still got the supermarket. Do we share a deck? Because I got the same cards. I wasn't paying attention. Look at that. I'm going to drop this here. House. And I can do some negatives on him. I'm guessing the row will clear if either player fills up one of their target bars. Well, that leaves a bunch of spots open. For him to take points. I wasn't paying attention to um, the cards available. So he's got shops factory. So placing a shop. Okay, so yeah, we don't share decks. Yeah. I wasn't I'll okay, pay attention to this too. Because right now I still have a point and it wasn't used up, so we must be sharing different um, different point values up here. So I'll pop down a house. Oh, he didn't take... Yeah, he couldn't take my points. He left this available, so I might as well grab that. And uh, I guess we'll drop some negatives over his way with some factories. We still need to clear this first row. Um, a green? Sure. I guess we did clear a row, didn't we? And I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. What you doing, Mr. Rick Selfridge? I'll just do one more round and then we'll go check out some of the other game options. Factory. Negatives. Houses. Uh, oh, okay. So anyone can use the first row. It gets cleared. I'm going to put it here. We can get that row. And do I get three moves again? That'd be cool. Looks like it. I don't know what these numbers really mean. Um, what am I doing now? Supermarket, so I could put this. Oh, I don't want a negative of my own houses. Here, and that's the end of my turn. Well, I get the idea of this. It's actually really cool. But let's go back to the title screen, and I will quickly show you the campaign, which is uh, very well done. Um, start this up. It has really nice voice acting. It really sort of eases you into how to play the game, and um, some different styling here, so news? we don't have. Caribou City has a new mayor. Some guy called Selfridge. Yeah, there's a bit of a story that goes along. So in the last mission, I talked about uh, the, there was an election. Um, and yeah, we've got different styling here, so it's not just all concrete. We're building out in the, um, the suburbs or the farm district, some buildings pre-placed. 
And I believe as you go through the campaign, your your deck will remain the same as you upgrade it. And then, of course, you can also upgrade your characters. Can't wait to meet him. But welcome to Grapefruit District. As you can see, there's not much going on here, so it's a perfect site for It'd be nice if there was an option to kind of skip some of these without start, just constantly Remember, clicking. There's this number when you play when this. So that makes everything harder since but then. But again, it's pretty nice voice words, acting, so I don't mind other, listening this to it most of the time. But I'll show you. For your sake, we'll skip through some of this and um, start playing some, some cards. Fill the yellow economy bar at the top right. So we're just looking to unlock a card, basically. Drop a brewery down over here, maybe. Factory, yeah. brewery. You get and now we have purchase. The yellow bar fills. We can spend this. So yeah, that's and the basic like idea. It'll walk you through how to play the game. Uh, you notice that this is actually only five tiles across, but we're also only trying to get two points. So it starts you off really, really easy. And it's pretty fun and addictive to just keep playing through. Thanks for watching this episode of Was That? I hope you enjoyed it. If uh, you want to catch more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Zat, or you can contact us at writezat at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and take care.